Welcome, everybody. It's time once again. Swim out into the ocean of ideas. Catch that wave as the sales pipeline starts to curl up. With the latest and maybe the greatest Viking fan I've ever seen, um, Matt Hines. Uh, did you just say ocean of ideas? That's pretty good. <laughs> I just came up with that. You know, I like that. I just that that rolls off the tongue. So speaking of speaking of uh, Vikings, we have a football game to talk about. Last week, uh, you know, we were talking about the upcoming game. Yes, I, I thought it would be close. I didn't know that either team would have a particular advantage but uh that fourth quarter was nuts oh three or four how many times they changed the lead three times in the last three minutes something crazy like that what's really crazy is a long-suffering vikings fan which is what i am i kept waiting for okay here it is they're gonna lose in the final second like they always do you know this is a team that the, the original hail mary pass was thrown against back in the 60s or 70s when uh Dallas beat them. So ever since then, they've always missed at the last minute. They've had all these heartbreak finishes, and I thought, this is it again. And then all of a sudden, he catches the pass on the last play. Nobody can believe it. I mean, when the term Hail Mary is invented <laughs> against uh, you, <laughs> your own losses, yeah, that is not a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and this conversation is actually it, it is relevant to our guest today. We'll get to in a second as well. Um, you know, we're not going to, I'll, I'll explain in a second why we're not going to talk football specifics with her, uh, on this show, but, um, thank you again, everyone for joining us here on sales pipeline radio. We are here live again, as we are every week at 1130, uh, Pacific two thirty Eastern. If you're joining us live, thank you very much for doing so. This is being recorded, at least on my end, this is being recorded live from the kitchen table above the home office in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. We got a, we got a sick four year old at home today. And uh, he has agreed to uh, uh, mostly uh, not join as a special surprise guest. He's he's having a good time here on his iPad. But um, you know what? Live live radio. What are you going to do? And what's the uh, shout out to your co-host, your little co-host here? What's my uh... little co-host Evan? Evan, say hi, Evan, or at least wave from the wave from the couch, Evan. <laughs> uh, he's doing all right. I don't want to encourage him too much. He'll come over here and start sharing with us everything. Exactly. Right uh so okay if you are listening live thank you for joining us if you're listening to us on the podcast thank you for subscribing uh it is humbling to see the number of people we're getting on a regular basis joining us on the podcast and as always you can join each and every episode of sales pipeline radio past present and future on salespipelineradio.com we are featuring every week some of the best and brightest minds in b2b sales and marketing today is no exception i am extremely excited to welcome lauren patrick uh, to Sales Pipeline Radio. She is the storyteller for Terminus, a B2B account-based marketing startup in Atlanta. Lauren, thank you for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Super excited to be here today. And I was cringing as you guys were talking about the Vikings and the topsy-turvy last minute. Oh, man, you're right. I'm still not sure if I'm ready to talk about what happened to my poor dogs. Yeah, so Lauren is a is a proud University of Georgia Bulldog, and uh, for those of you that uh, are in the states or follow college football, uh, a great, great uh, national championship game against Alabama that uh, went back and forth. Alabama lost, or excuse me, Alabama won uh, in overtime on just one of those those plays that you just can't believe the game is over. And so, uh, it, I, it, we will put in the call notes a great uh, blog post that Lauren put up, uh, just kind of as, as part of her feeling process. Uh, as a Georgia fan, uh, but and, and speaking of that, Lauren, I, I want to talk. We've got so many things we can cover today. We can talk about. We're going to talk about storytelling. We're going to talk a little about ABM. We're going to talk about Pretty Southern. We're going to go. We're going to cover a lot of bases. But I, I, I want to start with I mean, you. You have a you have an extensive marketing communications background. Um, you've got you've got a, you've got a journalism background, but y- your title at Terminus is storyteller, and I and I've always been fascinated by that, right? Because I mean, it, it's not you're not a content marketer. You're not you're not a copywriter. You're a storyteller. So talk a little bit about the difference you see there, and and why did uh, Terminus in particular invest in that kind of a role and that kind of an angle? So really quick, before I dive into that, I just want to make a quick clarification. I am a content marketer. I am a copywriter. I am a jack of all trades, which is why when Terminus asked me, "What do you want your title to be?" I picked storyteller because there's so much emphasis now and B2B in mass media and film about the story. People want to know the truth. They want to hear a story that they care about. And I think that's increasingly important for brands, especially really early stage companies like Terminus was. Um, I was employee number 12. I joined back in 2015. 
And Terminus was actually my fourth startup. I've been really lucky that I've been a marketing content manager, communications manager, senior marketing manager. So when Sangram Vajray asked me, what do you want your title to be? I said, well, what do you think about storyteller? And he's the one who really encouraged me. He said, I think you should be whoever you want to be. That sounds great. So it's been really, really cool and humbling to be able to tell the story of Terminus since we've been experiencing such incredible growth in the two and a half years that I've been at the company. Uh, that, the perspective that they that you guys have, and the uh, I think the latitude that Determinus has given you and Sangram has given you is, is is really refreshing. And I think, uh, you know, I think to your point, like you know, you you're a writer, you're a copywriter, doing a lot of those things. But there's a difference between writing copy and telling stories. And I think a lot of B two B companies get that wrong. They they write copy as if they're selling to buildings. And I've yet to meet a building that writes a check. You know, we're writing, we, we're creating content for people. What are some of the things, some examples of things you've done at Terminus? That, that might be good examples to share of, of storytelling versus content marketing? Oh, that's a great question, Matt. Um, I actually want to give a shout out to Joe Chernoff on this one. He said something to me in December of 2015 that really stuck with me. Um, he was talking about how you have to align your content to every stage of the buyer's journey and the customer life cycle so you have an idea of that full story. He said to look at your total content repository, every blog post, every deck, every email, and see how you can truly craft a narrative from there. And that's something I've really carried with me over the past couple of years, especially as more and more people have started talking about account-based marketing. They feel like they're not ready to do it because they don't have the right content. And that's where I've shared Joe's wisdom. Well, you have this great blog post. You could totally use that as part of a campaign. But more on that later. Um, some of the fun things I've really gotten to do with the company include helping Sangram launch ABM for Dummies. That was actually the first book that was ever published about account-based marketing back in 2016. It's been really amazing to see what Nikki Nixon and Sangram have done with the Flip My Funnel community. That's how I got to know you, Matt. So, gosh, we're coming up on our two-year anniversary of being friends since we first met in San Francisco. And, you know, just getting to hit the road and tell the story of Terminus and get more people excited about what account-based marketing can do for your business. And then lately, since Peter Herbert joined Terminus as VP of Marketing, the story I've been telling is hashtag one team, how we've gone through our own internal ABM transformation at Terminus, brought sales and marketing together on best fit accounts, and have just been crushing our revenue goals, which has been really, really exciting to see. That's awesome. awesome. You know, you, you mentioned some of uh, the insights that you got from Joe Chernoff around the buying journey and yeah, I, I don't know if I got this from him or someone else, the idea that, you know, your customer, your prospect simply does not care about your story until you prove that you care about theirs. And I think there are so many different ways that you, some examples you've already given in different ways where you can sort of tell a story that isn't about your company. It isn't about your product. It's about the people and the problems they're facing that are going to resonate more directly with individuals. And, and, I, and I love the fact that you guys are telling your own story internally about how sales and marketing are working together, you know, and 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 as as you and I both know, it is not always a clean and um, and flawless path. I mean, there are stumbles and failures along the way, and I think you know, making that uh, accessible to to a, to a wide variety of people not only does that help other people uh, feel like ABM is accessible to them, but it also builds real empathy and real connection between those people and people at Terminus, which which makes a big difference. Yeah, excuse my language on this, but this shit's hard. Like, it is hard to really get aligned with your sales team. Um, our chief revenue officer, Todd McCormick, um, you know, when we started on this ABM transformation journey, he was like, I might lose my job over this if this doesn't work because my revenue number is tied to this. My butt's on the line. And so I actually just did a blog post yesterday telling more about the one team story. And um, I opened with a gift with a shot of tequila because you need <laughs> a shot of tequila before you really get going with ABM. Yeah, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not worth doing. Uh, and I think that, you know, the, the old way that we all see all the time, um, you know, the, the, the BDRs that are flinging out bad emails, the marketing team that is generating volumes of leads as opposed to anything of quality. Um, you know, I think, it, you know, I, unfortunately, those days are not past. Uh, I think there's so many companies that still follow that path, but it, 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 how they stay in business is a whole nother question. 
because it's simply, I mean, as, as, as recipients of a lot of that marketing, we just don't see it working very well. Uh, wh where do you see this heading? I mean, I think that you, you guys have just certainly gotten into a lot more multimedia work. I know Sangram is now doing a daily podcast, I believe, and I don't know how the heck he actually pulls that off and has the time for it. But I, I think a lot of times when people think content marketing and even storytelling, I think, you know, the, the default answer, the default channel for most companies is the written word. You guys have done a lot of work to diversify that across multiple channels, across multiple mediums, online and offline. Talk about, you know, the importance of multi-channel as a storytelling vehicle. Oh, God, absolutely. So in the words of Sangram, you have to be where your customers are most active, right? Like for me personally, when I first launched my platform, Pretty Southern, which you touched on earlier, I knew that Pretty Southern was going to be digital. I knew it wasn't going to be print. I knew that there'd be some audio involved with podcasts and interviews like this. But I think where Terminus really got lucky is that we were the first on social to really own that hashtag for ABM. Yes, we had some of our competitors that were out there talking about ABM, but we're the ones who really got programmatic about it. You know, kudos to Nikki pulling off five foot my funnel conferences in a year was insane. Yeah. You know, she did that show on the road. So it was that in-person experience and using events as a channel. We've used PFL direct mail to make sure people get with um, copies of the book in our ABM framework. We send our customers a welcome kit that they tweet. We have spun up our monthly webinar program. When Sam Graham came to me at the end of last year and said, I'm going to do a daily podcast in 2018. There's one thing I've learned that you never doubt Sanger when he says he's going to do <laughs> Just ask him, okay, how are we going to make this work? And so I've been really lucky that Sangram has just run with this. And I've just been along for the ride, helping to support him how I can. But going back to your original question, I saw this interview that Gary Vaynerchuk did recently when he talked about if you write a blog post, you better do a podcast about it. You better do a slide deck about it. Like if you have this one story you're putting out there in one channel, there's so many other ways you can repurpose that content. Like any video that Gary B does, he immediately does a transcription and then takes the audio and puts it on a podcast. And I just thought that was brilliant. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, what's, what's kind of fun about sort of modern storytelling and content is that, you know, there's so much innovation along the way. There's people that have new ideas and try new things, some of which fail, some of which really sort of become the beachheads for the rest of us. Uh, I don't know a lot of people that are doing daily podcasts. I mean, when I first saw that he was going to do that, I thought it was nuts. And I think it was earlier this week or something, you know, I saw sort of his plan. Well, on Tuesdays, we do this. And on Wednesdays, we do this. And now I'm thinking, he just created, he just created, I mean, you, you have... We all have the ability to build media channels out of all of this, our blogs, our podcasts, our videos. Like, he's creating his own net network. I mean, he's got his own news network now that is going have <laughs> to have serialized content, serialized brands. I mean, I could argue, like, what is Flip My Funnel, the movement, if not a multi-channel, ongoing storytelling news network for terminus? You know? And I, I think that there's an awful lot to be said for you know, companies that are willing to invest in that. I know Joe Paluzzi, who who up until recently was running the uh, Content Marketing Institute, who just sold it to UBM, you know, his last book uh, was about the fact that people are not just doing content for marketing, they're using content as a profit center. They are turning content into not supporting the business, but turning it into the business. Um, and I think, you know, if for, for those of you that aren't familiar, you know, go to Terminus.com, check out what they're doing, and then check out Flip My Funnel. It's, I think, you know, it, I think it's, it is it is one of the best examples of taking sort of a content theme and idea and then turning it into an entire empire, turning it into a, a a driver in and of itself. The rest of us or the rest of other companies that have to rent attention and borrow attention from other media sources and other events, you know, that's that world is turning on its head. And I think you guys have been at the forefront of that. I didn't mean this to, to become the uh, let's let's praise Lauren and Terminus and put my funnel, but it's it's worth pointing out because you guys have done some innovative things. You guys have done made some, you know, made made a lot of tests and uh, and not everything has worked out. Right. But um, you've uh, I think you're, you're you're creating a brand new playbook. We're going to have a quick break. Uh, I'm talking way too much. We're going to I'm going to ask a lot more questions to come back for the break. we got to pay some bills. We'll be back with more with Lauren Patrick. We're going to talk more about storytelling, less about football but also a little about Pretty Southern. PrettySouthern.com. Check it out over the break. We'll be right back. Sales Pipe Brand Radio. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working. And how about a way to apply it specifically today to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and most of all, conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. And, amazingly, you can download it for free. 
HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds, H-E-I-N-Z-M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing cycle, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas, strategies, tactics you can put to work right away, like today. The loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem. And it's something you can come back to over and over again as a reference guide. Why not download your free copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide? It's free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds. H-E-I-N-Z, marketing.com. All right, back to uh, two of the best storytellers I've heard in a while here. I'm, I'm getting into this here. You guys have, uh, you guys have got my attention here, Matt and his guest. Oh, it's fun. I, I'll tell you, I, I, as Lauren mentioned, I've known her for a couple of years now. We met at a conference, actually one of their conferences a couple of years ago, and uh, she is she is a peach, and I'm not just saying that because she's from Georgia. Uh, but uh, we'll have a lot more with Lauren here on Sales Pipeline Radio. Thanks again for joining us. If you do like this conversation, if you like the ideas Lauren has and want to share this with your team, make sure you get a copy of this uh, of this episode. We'll have it up on Sales Pipeline Radio in a couple days. You can get all of our past episodes, all of our future episodes on Sales Pipeline Radio coming up over the next couple weeks on Sales Pipeline Radio. Next week, we're going to feature Katrina Munsell. She is the chief manager Microsoft social media, uh, I don't know what they call it. They call it the hub, the command center, whatever. But all the social media handles that Microsoft has for its products, for its for, for corporate, are managed out of her out of her command center. So we're going to talk about how she manages that. Following week, we got Eric Spatzer. He is with Citrix. We're going to be talking about sales enablement, sales engagement. Uh, a couple of years ago, no one really knew what sales enablement was. Now in B two B circles, you hear it is one of the fastest growing functions uh, within say within uh, sales and marketing. So a lot more great episodes coming up on Sales Pipeline Radio today. We, of course, have Lauren Patrick. She is her official title is storyteller at Terminus, which uh, is, is definitely a white hot company. I know you joined your employee 12. I think the company now is, you know, 400 customers, 120 employees continuing to, you know, expand your footprint, not only in Atlanta, but in in the B2B marketing space as well. What is it what is it like to be on that kind of a train i mean like you know i've I've been at early stage companies and been with a couple of them as they grew but i mean i've you know it's been a while since i did that what is that like for you having been in there early and seeing so many cultural changes as you grow as well yeah wow that is such a a multifaceted question (laughs) so i'm going to dissect it where i can um i have never seen a company grow as fast as terminus has um and i really can't wait to see what's in store especially now since we just acquired our first company like you said, we were expanding our footprint, and so now Terminus has an office on the West Coast in San Francisco. We got really, really lucky to acquire one of my favorite technologies, Bright Funnel, at the end of 2017. So what Bright Funnel can now do in terms of measuring activity means a lot for someone who does my job. So I can go into Bright Funnel and see that like X amount of webinars help drive X amount in pipeline and one deal for the company. And so that's pretty freaking cool. And while the revenue growth has helped us get where we need to be, there are so many other things that happen along the way that help Terminus grow as fast as it has. And I think one of the big ones is product market fit. ABM was such a new thing that Sangram was able to spot that trend and immediately get going talking about the problem of less than 1% of leads turning into revenue. And people really bought into that idea. Again, going back to something that your customers really care about. This was something they stuck with. You know, if you can't show an ROI on all your marketing because it's not generating revenue, then you're going to be out of a job. And so I think that talking about that really helped Terminus grow and build a a subcategory of B2B marketing technology around ABM. And God loves Sangram. He's out there once a month speaking, once a month on a webinar, the daily podcast. Like, that's done a ton to help grow the brand. And then from my perspective, and this is actually one of my secrets for any marketers listening to this, if you work at a startup, apply for every single free award that is out there. So I had my eye on the Atlanta Business Chronicle, the AJC, uh, Demand Gen Report, Direct Marketing News, and um, our local marketing association here in Atlanta called TAG, the Technology Association of Georgia. I've got a running Google Doc of all the awards that are in progress, deadlines, applications that are due. So over the past almost three years, Terminus has won almost 20 awards for various different things. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, not, not only is that impressive because I'm assuming you have earned all those awards, but also the fact that you have tracked them and gone after them and treated that kind of like a pipeline in and of itself. Yes. You mentioned earlier measurement and ROI. I think content has had a bit of a tough time in this space. I think it's, it's in some companies as 
as the investment in content has increased, the microscope on content has increased as well. I don't think it's fair to expect a lot of great storytelling to convert into closed deals. But how do you handle or how do you tackle internally the, the issue of attribution? How do you justify the impact that content and storytelling is having uh, for a business when it's not a, a direct response tool, when it's hard to draw straight lines between what you're doing and making the cash register ring. Yeah, wow. So I really love talking about this part, actually, Matt, because um, growing up, my dad was in tech sales. I was kind of like your kid. I would be sitting at home on a sick day listening to my dad on sales calls in the other room. And so when I first started getting into B2B marketing and I was telling my dad about some of these things that I was doing, he was like, wow, this is really cool. I wish my marketing team was doing stuff like that. And that's just always really stuck with me. Like, I'm a revenue-focused marketer. I love when my sales reps come to me and be like, oh, this event that we went and worked the booth at together, I just got a deal to close from that. Or, hey, the sales call that you jumped on with me or this RFP that you helped me craft, I just got that deal. Like, that's what gets me really excited because I know that my stuff's working. And so, for me, when I go and I look at all my different programmatic content efforts, the webinars, the white papers, the ebook, the blog, social uh, you know, if you're not tracking how people are converting on those touch points, then you're not doing ABM. And that's the core of it. If you're marketing to an account, you better be looking at all those different activities. And it's simple to do if you take the time to structure it correctly in your CRM and your marketing automation tools. I think that's a really good perspective. And I think that because it's very clear when, when you hear you talk and when you hear you think about buying journey and, you know, your organization's alignment around not only one team, but I think one team translates into one goal. It's clear that you are automatically applying a filter to what you're doing based on what you believe is going to most likely drive prospects from unaware to interested to engaged. So I think there's, you know, even if you can't measure it precisely, I think that sometimes intent is, is more important than precision on getting some of that right we're gonna run out of time very quickly here on sales pipeline radio as we always do a couple couple other questions for you I, so clearly people should go to terminus.com check out a lot of your great work uh, so you know, subscribe to, to sangram's podcast as well but i also highly encourage you to go check out pretty southern lauren patrick can you please describe pretty southern to our sales pipeline radio audience oh thanks matt yeah pretty southern has been my labor of love since 2010 um, like you said, uh, my background's in journalism. I was editor of UGA's newspaper, and I graduated in 2007, right before the Great Recession. So newsrooms were really hiring, and the ones that were, I was seeing my friends get furloughed or laid off. And so I ended up taking a job at autotrader.com in their marketing department, because at the time, I was really focused on print. And if y'all remember the old Trader magazine that used to pick up like a dollar in your local convenience store, I was actually doing the distribution for that. So I was looking at magazine numbers all day and just really missed writing. So I launched my first blog, Pretty Southern, with the help of my husband, Kevin, who's a tech grad. Couldn't have done it without him. Um, he's the one who bought my domain, set up my first WordPress instance, helped me learn HTML. And since then, we've become one of the top-ranked Southern lifestyle blogs. And it's because I you know, had the gumption to go and start writing my own stuff and teach myself HTML and social and PR that when the content marketing boom started happening, when Pardot exited to Salesforce, suddenly there were jobs for people who like wanted people to write about their brand, to have an in-house journalist to do communications and content marketing. And it's just been a godsend. I've been really, really blessed and lucky to get to do what I do. So it's always amazing. It's funny to me, like the things you pick up on. So that was, I, I love that. Definitely people should check that out. But I think the one thing I just picked up, is your husband a yellow jacket? Yes, we are a house divided. And he has been the most supportive husband over the past couple of weeks. Oh, uh, that now that is a sign of love right there. Like when you've got <laughs> arch rivals that not only can 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 find a, a way to get married, but then to support each other in the times of need. Uh, <laughs> that that's impressive, Paul. That might be kind of like you know getting a getting a Packer fan to sort of spend some time with you, consoling you over you know what might happen here in the next couple of weeks. Hard it's, to it's imagine possible. that. Hard to imagine that happening. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, last quick question for you, Lauren, and then we'll let you go. Uh, on the content marketing side. What are some people, what are some sources that have been inspiring to you that have helped help you learn to be a better content marketer, to be a better storyteller? It can be speakers, it can be writers, they can be dead, they can be long dead, but who are some of the people that you recommend others check out to, uh, to continue to learn more about storytelling? So let's start with a living. Uh, Ann Hanley in Marketing Crafts, my God, like what she has been able to do in terms of growing her community, the education, the events, and a superstar. Um, I actually met her briefly at an event. It was the end of the day at Flip My Funnel Boston, and she's walking around. So we're breaking down. 
And I, I was just like shell shocked. Like I couldn't even articulate like how much of a fan of hers that I was because I was so tired. It was such a shoot yourself in the foot moment. So, and you're listening to this. I love you. You are amazing. From the dead. Uh, her movie is out now. The post, um, Catherine Graham's story with the Washington post, what she was able to do with her family's enterprise and her life was just so inspiring. You know, she was the first female CEO of a fortune 500 company ever. And what she was just able to accomplish as a woman and a mother and someone who cares so deeply about the truth and storytelling. And she's just my career idol. And I, I love Meryl Streep, but I was really let down about the movie, but that's something for a whole nother time. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I think, I think we got another episode brewing here about, but uh, we, we are unfortunately out of time. I want to thank again, Lauren Patrick. She is a storyteller for Terminus. She is the editor of pretty Southern. You can check those out at terminus.com, pretty Southern.com. We will have links to both sites in our show notes. Uh, that'll be available when the podcast gets uh, published here in the next couple of days up on sales pipeline radio. And then we'll have a summary on our blog at HeinzMarketing.com with links to these as well. Thank you again to Lauren for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Join us next week at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. We're here every Thursday for my great producer, Paul. Go Vikings! And you've been listening to Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been flying along on the Sales Pipeline. Brought to you by Matt Hines and Hines Marketing on the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you.